Greetings and welcome to the Shaman's View, the view from the invisible world. I'm Dr. Alberto Violdo. Last week we had some technical issues with the journey to the Chamber of Contracts. And uh, we were cut off. Unfortunately, the internet went down. I'm uh, actually speaking to you from Los Lobos Sanctuary. We are on a mountaintop in Chile in South America. Beautiful water, clean air, bad internet. But, you know, this is the price you pay for being in the top of the world. So we, I have recorded that program, and it's put up. It's already up on Facebook. If you'd like to listen to it, it's a really important step for us to get to the depth of the work that we want to get to. And today I want to speak to you and lead you on a journey to the chamber of grace to discover those deeply hidden gifts. And this is one of the final journeys that we make because you need to go through the place of deep healing first. You need to go and witness your original wounding. If you're not ready to see it, to recognize that you're going to keep projecting it onto others and seeing it in other people and being attracted to the people that you hope can heal you, which will get you into really terrible love relationships, really bad business relationships, and really poor investments. Investments of your time, of your money, of your energy, of your love, your creativity. So we need to go through those chambers. Witness the original wounding. Not try to solve it or fix it. Simply witnessing it. Renegotiating the soul contracts. The contracts that we made under duress. And then visiting the chamber of grace where we come to recover that lost soul part. This is so important because even if you had the perfect childhood and you've had no trauma in your life, we inherit cultural trauma. We inherit that myth of having been cast out of the garden, kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and losing our original nature, our natural mind. So we have been going out of our minds trying to recover that natural mind. And it's only after we renegotiate these contracts, come up with a better deal for yourself, a better agreement with spirit. It's in our power to do that. In fact, that's the only power that we truly have, is to come up with a more original agreement that we want to live up to. And then the universe begins to mirror back the terms of that agreement perfectly. It gives you everything, but you've got to give everything to life in order to get that kind of support from the universe. And today we're going into the chamber of grace to find that original self that was never cast out of the garden. So even if you had the perfect childhood, know that there are certain things that we have been deprived of. We have been deprived of the goddess, of the feminine, of the global view that the feminine provides, not the dissecting view, not looking at the body like a bunch of organs and illnesses, but as a, as a miracle, as a system. Systems biology, systems medicine. Wow. Understanding our journey through the earth as, as being part of a much greater system, an ecosystem that we're part of that's connected to a planetary system and an interstellar system surrounded by all life on all sides. And I'm enthralled by the big debate that's happening today about whether life exists outside of what we know as life on the earth. And the shamans forever have been saying that the universe is populated, that the invisible world, that we're cohabitating with all kinds of consciousnesses that we're simply, that most people are simply not aware of. So we're coming to recover an essential soul part that we need in order to have this journey through life be an extraordinary one, where we can come to the fullness of our humanity and where we can transcend the pettiness and the warring and the fighting and the judgment and the, and the acts of violence that we commit against ourselves, against nature, and against others. 
So join me as we go on this journey and we're going to begin with our breathing practice, inhaling to a count of four, holding to a count of four, exhaling to four and empty to four. And it's in the empty and the places at the top of the breath and the bottom of the breath that we break free into journeying. That's where we are able to break free when we are full and when we are empty. So taking a deep breath, and exhaling, and another deep breath. And now inhaling to four, one, two, three, four, holding to four, two, three, four, exhaling to four, two, three, four, holding to four, and inhale again and exhale and come into this moment and I'm going to take you in a journey to the great world tree and then to the depths of the earth of the belly of the mother the belly of the mother where we all come from and where we journey to discover that self that had to go back to our mother in order to be safe this is that healed part that fled, and what remained behind was the wounded part, continuing to seek healing for so many lives and so many names and so many loves, and not finding it. And now we're going to journey back to the belly of the mother to meet that self that never left the garden, that lives in bliss and in grace, and inviting her, inviting him to come back. It's time, you're ready. Asking her or him what you need to do to protect it, to make it feel safe. Remember, that soul part left because it was not safe. Sometimes it left before we were born, when our mother did not feel safe. If it was not safe where you lived. So I'd like you to imagine yourself in a garden, in a meadow, and in the distance you see the world tree, a great tree calling to you, and you feel the cool grass beneath your feet, you're barefoot, and as you draw near the tree, with your feet, you feel the humming of the roots as they go deep into the earth. And you look up to the branches, reaching up to the heavens. And the trunk opens up and invites you in. And you're in your luminous form. So you enter the trunk of the world tree. And you feel the rivers of sunlight streaming down from the high branches, from the leaves. And coming up from the roots, the streams of water and nutrients and minerals coming up towards the high branches for that alchemy that we call photosynthesis, turning light into life. And enter the trunk, 
Step into the trunk and feel these streams and rivers coursing through you and cleansing you and healing you. And now I'd like you to follow one of these rivers of light coming from the high branches. Follow it down into the earth, into one of the tap roots, that great big tap root, the biggest root in the whole system. Going down past the rich, moist earth, past the giant boulders, to the very tip of that taproot where it dips into an underground river or stream that it drinks from. And step into that stream and feel the waters washing through you and cleansing away any energies that you may not bring with you into the realms of the soul. And when you're ready, let the waters carry you deep into the earth until you reach a sacred cavern to wash you onto a secret garden, a secret garden, and you stand up on the beach and you look around you and there is a light, there is a light And I'd like you to make your way towards a mountain across the meadow. Make your way towards that mountain. And when you get to the mountain, you see that it has a rock face. And there's an opening in the rock. And it's a cave. It is leading you deep into an altar where you will be dismembered in a sacred way. And you step in and you walk past where the light reaches and you come to this altar where you will be dismembered to your essential self, brought back to your essential self. And your to-do list is taken away from you, your emails, your obligations, even your body and your name until you're stripped down to your core, to your very essence. And when you are, you call on the guide the guide, we call the guide Huascar, the Lord of life, the Lord of death, the lady of the depths. And ask her, ask him to lead you to the back of the cavern, to lead you to the back of the cavern, to a beautiful chamber where you are able to meet yourself. That young part that left, that fled a long time ago, or maybe it was not born, that part of you that stayed behind. That part that was not born. Or maybe it's an ancient part, a wise old woman or wise old man. In the chamber of grace. That self that always remain in grace. The healed self. It may be very ancient. It may be thousands of years since you have met this healed part. What is it doing? Is it by the river? Is it reading by the window? Sitting by the fire? Walking through the woods? And ask that soul part, that little one, or that ancient one, who are you? Why did you leave? Why did you have to go? I've been waiting for you for so long. And I'd like you to ask that soul part what his gifts are. What gifts do you have for me? What beauty? What are your gifts? What is your medicine? What is your wisdom? Tell me about your innocence. And listen to your soul's part. It might say to you, I'm willing to come back to you, but this is what you have to do.
and it might give you a to-do list of things you need to change, maybe your diet, your relationship, your schedule, your job, your work, your sleeping habits. This is what I need to feel safe again, to come back with you. <clears throat> and listen to how he or she says to you, I have been waiting for you for so long. <sighs> And I'd like you to say to your soul part how you will protect her, how it will be safe for her, for him to come back with you. It's going to be okay, my little one. I will look after you. You will be safe. Maybe your soul part has gifts that were too big for you to hold when they were offered to you. And let her know, let him know, I am ready for those gifts that I did not know how to use so long ago. I am ready for them now. I am ready. And ask your soul part to come with you and take him or her into you. Oh, come back home, my little one. Come back home. And if they're not ready for that, take your soul part's hand and make your way out of the cave, back to where you were dismembered, calling on your soul part to come with you. Come with me, my little one. And go back to that altar so that you can be remembered once again, remembered. Where you get your name and your life and your identity is all coming back to you calling on that soul part to return with you and begin to make your way out of that cave, holding your soul part's hands. It's okay, little one. We're coming back. We're going home together. And going to the edge of the stream where you entered and sitting there for a moment and speaking to your soul part and letting her know, letting him know that you will look after her, that it will be fine. And listening to what it has to say to you. If your soul part gave you a to-do list, it might say, I'll, be, I'll be, go, be going with you, but if you don't change, I'm leaving again. Now you have to change your life, your lifestyle, your habits, your beliefs, your self-judgment, the way you hurt yourself or others, for her to remain with you, for him to remain with you. And come up with an agreement that yes, I will make the changes required now. I will eat the way I have to eat. I'll clean up my diet in my life. And take your soul part's hand, or if he or she is in you, bring them along and dive into the waters. And let the waters carry you back to where you rested. And rest there once again. Allow the waters to wash away any energies that you may not bring with you. Holding your soul part by the hand, so happy that she's back, that he's back. And I'd like you to ask your soul part once again, are you truly ready to come back with me? Knowing that you can come back again if the timing is not right. And if the answer is yes, and if you're willing to commit, to the changes that you need to make to recover your soul. Then enter that taproot. Bring your soul part with you. Come, little one. Time to go home. Coming up that taproot, 
following the streams of water coming up to the trunk. Past the giant boulders, the moist earth, and back to our world, the middle world, inside the trunk of the world tree. And taking your soul part's hand, step out of the trunk, keeping your soul part by your side, and take a few steps away and turn and bow to the world tree. Thank you, great being, for leading me into your depths and into the realms of the mother, the realms of the soul. And begin to make your way back across the meadow, hand in hand with your soul, with that which is making you whole once again. Back into your room, back into your body. And imagine your soul part sitting on your lap now. And speak with her. Speak with him and say to her, say to him, I will look after you. I will never let you be afraid again. I will protect you. I will receive your gifts, challenging as they might be. I will honor them. The gifts of purity, of innocence, of speaking truth, even when others are, are not. Make that vow to yourself, to your soul, that you will be true to you. And speak that to your soul. And now take her, take him, and bring them into your heart center. Welcome them home, taking them into you with your hands. <sighs> and sensing their energy going to every cell in your body. Resetting your instinct, retuning your body to your highest destiny, to your highest self, because now you are whole once again. And experience that sensation of wholeness, of completion, of being once again whole. That part of you that was always empty is now full. That part of you that never felt you belonged here now belongs. Those times that you wondered what galaxy you came from, now you know you come from this one. So many times that you have felt your world was not safe, it didn't support you, now it does because you are now safe, because you are now supporting yourself and your destiny. You are whole. You are one. <clears throat> so I'd like to caution you because frequently we feel that once we recover our lost soul part, that everything in our life is magically going to change. Well, it does, but it's not always easy. Soul retrieval has a way of creating a personal pachakuti in your life. A pachakuti is when your life gets turned over so that it's brought into right relationship and right alignment. In fact, the word pachakuti means to establish the natural order of things once again. So be on the lookout. And the legends say that we have two weeks, that we have two weeks of opportunity, a half moon of opportunity for this soul part to really feel like we're going to keep our commitments and our vows that we made to her or to him of changing our lifestyle, our diet, our relationship, our beliefs, our habits, everything. And not one at a time. <laughs> Not saying, well, I think I'll work on my diet for the next month and start eating healthier. All of it together. Because that soul part will leave if you do not keep your part of the agreement that you made with it. 
it will leave again because her world will cease to be nourishing and nurturing and safe. So be sure you keep your part of the agreement, but it's been set in motion. Now you will have the universe, the cosmos, life supporting you with the choices that you made, which is to become whole and to embrace these parts that you have disowned before so that we no longer need to project them onto others. Now you have come back to yourself. You have individuated. This is what the Jungians love to call individuation. It's what the shamans speak about as soul recovery, soul retrieval. And you don't only recover those wounded parts that you had in your childhood or your past life, but you recover the garden. And you discover in the process how we can turn our lives into a paradise, into a garden. How we can speak to the rivers and to the trees and to the mountains and to spirit. And the rivers and the trees and the mountains and spirit will speak back to us. Thank you for joining me in this, in this journey that we've had today and in the journeys that we've had together. And I invite you to, to continue the practice so you master the art of journeying. Remember that this is the shaman's art, the journeying through space, through inner space, through time to the past, to the future, and outside of time itself into infinity. Thank you for joining me in this journey in the shaman's view. And this completes our cycle of journeys that we've done. And these will be available if you want to review them. They'll be available in, face, in, uh, in YouTube and in Facebook. Uh, so repeat them. This is, a, this is an art form. And the more you do it, the more you will, you will master the art form. And remember, it begins with the breath, with the 4-4 four, four breath. And I like to do it with a drum just so that I can get a little rhythm to my breath. So thank you so much. Blessings. And I will see you in our next Shaman 21, in our next Shaman's View.